Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former Deputy National Secretary Advisor and CPAC board member, Katie McFarland. talk to you today about why I broke with the conserv why I broke with the Republican Party and the traditional elites of the Republican Party. Look, I am a card-carrying member of the Republican Foreign Policy Establishment. I went to MIT, I went to Oxford, I'm a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, I worked for Henry Kissinger, I was in the Nixon, Ford, and Reagan administrations. But about 20 years ago, I realized that we had lost our way, that we were not paying attention to China. That's why I supported Donald Trump, and I joined his administration, and I paid dearly for that privilege. President Trump had nominated me to be the ambassador to Singapore, and on the Mueller Commission came knocking at my door, and they decided that I must be guilty of something. They came knocking at my door saying, we're the FBI, you don't need a lawyer, we just want to ask you a couple of questions. And so the questions were all about the Russian interference and the Russia this, Russia that, and I said, I didn't even deal with Russia in my job. And they said, well, but let's just talk. So I, after our conversation, where they showed up at my house unannounced, I called the former attorney general and I said, do I need to get a lawyer? Am I in some kind of trouble here? And he said, no, you're probably just fine. They just want to find out what's going on, whether there had been interference by the Russians in the American election. So fast forward, silly, stupid me, I kept talking to the people on the Mueller investigation until the point where they said, you need to get a lawyer because we're about to charge you with a crime. And I said, crime? I didn't even meet any Russians. And they said, well, we know there's a crime there somewhere, effectively. So. I got a really mean, tough lawyer and found out that indeed they wanted me to plead guilty to a crime I hadn't committed. Perjury crime, I hadn't lied to them. They wouldn't let me have access to my files. Fast forward, I'm in the Mueller investigation. I'm in the, here, I'm in the room. I come in, they pick me up in an armored limousine, take me into a concrete bunker. I'm sitting on one side of the table, no notes, me, my lawyer who can take notes, and five people from the Mueller investigation with thick notebooks quizzing me on everything I did, everything I said, every memo I had written. They were leaking to the media, taking my words out of context. I don't want to get into it because it upsets me to even talk about it. But at the end of the day, it was pretty clear they knew I hadn't committed a crime, but they figured they could bankrupt me, that they could so intimidate me that I would plead guilty to a crime I didn't commit. And when that was clear I wasn't going to do that, then they wanted me to implicate somebody else, my boss, Donald Trump, in a crime I knew he didn't commit. It went on and on, subpoena after subpoena. I was almost broken. I lost my faith. I said to my husband, this is never going to stop. They're going to hound me to the grave. I'm going to just tell them what they want. And my sweet, wonderful husband of 40 years said, don't you dare do that. You'll never live with yourself. So I finally said, you know, I'm not going to lie. Do your worst. And in fact, at that point, they kind of disappeared. Nobody had ever told them that before. Nobody had ever refused to be broken. At that point, my husband looked at me and said, you know, you've you got to get your head back. You've got to get your feet back under yourself. Let's get out of here. So we got on a plane that night from New York. We live in New York. We flew to the overnight flight to Glasgow on the west coast of Scotland. We rented a car. We drove to the very far west coast of Scotland. We got on a ferry boat. We went eight hours on a ferry boat to an island in the middle of the Atlantic where there were a whole lot more sheep than people. And there was no Wi-Fi. There was no TV. There was certainly no reporters from the New York Times. And I had to start figuring it out again. I thought, you know, my career's over. I, I've just been drawn through the ringer because I decided to support somebody who wasn't part of the establishment because I dared to believe differently. And I had the United States government, this is my government, and they were coming after me. They knew I hadn't committed a crime. Why were they doing this? What had happened to me? What had happened to my country? 
and I took long walks in the Scottish sunshine, which means rain, <laughs> shoved the sheep out of the way, no paved roads, the only thing in Scotland at that time of year. It's dark, people just drink a lot of whiskey. So I realized, though, that what I was going through was what Americans go through every 40 years. Our founding fathers understood that we the people meant that we are the sovereigns of this nation, not some elite in Washington. That's why we had the revolution. That's why 40 years after the revolution, we had, we had another revolution. It was the Jacksonian revolution. People who get in power want to stay in power. They will do anything to stay in power. But our founding fathers understood if you give us the power, that it is our right, but it's also our responsibility to go after the elites in Washington. Well, right now, what's happened is that, you know, the people in the various government agencies, initials you can't even remember, they say, oh, that's a president? There's Donald Trump? Ah, presidents come, presidents go. We're here forever. You can't fire us. We got automatic promotions. We're not gonna work during COVID, but we're gonna vote ourselves pay raises. That's the problem in America today. It's not Republican or Democrat. It's we the people versus Washington. And, and what I realized, me and the Scottish sunshine and all those sheep and my wonderful husband of 40 years, was that there is collateral damage every time we go through one of these revolutions, whether it's the American Revolution, the Jacksonian Revolution, the Civil War, the Industrial Revolution, the, the Great Depression, the Reagan Revolution, or today. And it takes a lot of courage to stand through. My career is not what it's supposed to be. My life, I get it, you know, but it was worth it. And I would do it all over again if I could guarantee the future. I just want to leave you with one thought. The Bible tells us that one of, your, one of life's greatest blessings is to know your children's children. I think the greatest blessing we can give to those children is an America strong and free, at peace and with prosperity to our children and to our children's generation. And I am gonna fight for that till my last breath. Thank you.